In today's video, we have some more NHL signings, including some entry-level contracts by some prospects, and we also have some more trade rumors, taking a look at some teams like the Boston Bruins, the Winnipeg Jets, and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have some more signings to discuss here. Of course, we had the big signing earlier, so Dino Chara signing with the Washington Capitals, which we did a, a video on earlier today. If you missed that, I'll link it near in the YouTube cards. Of course, he signed a one-year deal with Washington, so his time with the Bruins is now coming to a close. Now, the signing we had here today was one we talked a little bit about yesterday, something that I said was likely going to happen, and we should be able to make official today, and that's Derek Broussard signing with the Arizona Coyotes. He signs the... Veteran contract, typical one-year, $1 million deal. Uh, so, of course, he basically will replace his old pal, uh, Derek Stepan, in uh, the Coyotes organization. Of course, he was recently traded to Ottawa. Uh, so, obviously, that gets a veteran center iceman with the Coyotes, but at a much cheaper price when it comes to the cap hit, at least, uh, for uh, Broussard compared to Stepan. Of course, Stepan was only owed another $2 million this year, but his cap hit was 6.5. And, of course, uh, he moves on. And they bring in Broussard at $1 million. So a uh, big cap hit savings and a little bit of dollars as well, which goes a long way for a Coyotes team who's been trying to cut as many dollars as they possibly can here uh, since, obviously, they've had a lot of lost revenue like everybody else across the league. They're probably one of the teams struggling a little bit more than most. So obviously something like that is important to them. And it gives Broussard a chance uh, to another uh, keep his career going on another one-year contract. Now, as I mentioned, we also have... A couple of prospects signed uh, entry-level deals today, including the Carolina Hurricanes signing a second-round pick from last year's 2019 NHL draft. Jamison Rees gets a three-year entry-level deal. Of course, a standard contract for entry-level rookies. The center has been playing in the OHL for the Sarnia Sting the past few years, so obviously he'll be looking to make the jump here. I would not be surprised if we see a few more teams sign some more prospects that may not have their entry-level deals yet. Uh, given you know there's some uncertainty where they're all going to be able to play, we know the East Coast League is going to be down uh, to uh, you know a smaller number of teams playing this year, and we did get some updates on the American Hockey League earlier, uh, which obviously we'll uh, touch on here shortly. But they will be having a season by the looks of things, uh, similar to what the NHL is going to be doing. But Jameson Reese gets his uh, entry level deal with the Hurricanes. The San Jose Sharks signed 2020 second round pick Tristan Robbins, who's also a center from the Western Hockey League, from the Saskatoon Blades, gets his entry level contract. As well. Now, as I was mentioning, the American Hockey League uh, did have some more meetings. It looks as though they're pretty well set to start their season in February. So the NHL will be up and running for you know two to three weeks' time uh, before the American Hockey League does. So that gives them time uh, to have, for NHL teams to have their training camps, decide who they'd like to send down, and then of course they can have an American Hockey League camp afterwards uh, and get ready for that season. So it looks as though they're going to do a similar concept. Uh, they're going to have some of the Canadian teams play in a kind of northern division, the same type of thing. So you're going to see the Belleville Senators, the Laval Rocket, and the Toronto Marley, and the Manitoba Moose have a Canadian northern division similar style to what the NHL is doing. Uh, so they're going to have a lot of games against each other, which certainly goes a long way, though, to helping uh, when it comes to, obviously, quarantining, which is not really practical in uh, the uh, hockey environment. And there's also possible that all four of those teams are looking to consider having their AHL affiliates play out of their NHL arenas to make it even more simple. Of course, in the case of the Manitoba Moose, they're already doing that, but the other three American Hockey League franchises are looking to do the same. So maybe Belleville might be playing in Ottawa instead. Of course, Toronto uh, obviously plays in the same city, but they might be using the same arena, and the Laval Rocket might be sharing uh, the Bell Centre with Montreal as well, just to keep things even more simplified, and it's easier to kind of set up a little bit of a more of a you know somewhat of a closer to a bubble concept for those teams but the details from the AHL's return of play is just slowly kind of trickling out here as they had a bunch of meetings over the last day or so now as I mentioned we have some more trade rumors I want to talk about obviously teams are still making moves to become cap compliant get their roster set for the upcoming 2021 NHL season I want to talk about the Boston Bruins first up now of course as I mentioned earlier and of course in the video earlier Captain Zdeno Chara is gone after 14 seasons with the Bruins he's no longer going to be wearing the black and gold this season it's going to be weird seeing him play with the Capitals jersey on but as we've been reporting and listening to uh, the Boston Hockey Now media especially indicating for some time that he likely wasn't going to be going back it looks as though the Bruins want to go in a different direction and that's exactly what they're doing but they apparently are still looking at the uh, the left shot defenseman market when it comes to trades and free agency and kind of examining their 
prospect young defenseman as well and trying to decide here what to do. I mean, they very, very well could give more opportunity to guys like Jacobs Borrell or Vakaninen, for example. Um, obviously, they could look to the free agent market. They've been linked to some other defensemen that are still out there, like a Ben Hutton, for example, with Sammy Votnin. Even a Carl Alsner uh, is a guy they've been linked to as well that they could all sign for fairly cheap contracts to bring in for extra depth and uh, you know to have more insurance. You're going to need lots of defensemen if you're going to have any chance at having a deeper playoff run. So obviously that's a possibility, but they could also turn to the trade market. I mean, the Bruins have been relatively quiet this offseason outside of getting a few uh, things done in-house, like the DeBrus signing, for example. They haven't really done a whole heck of a lot. This roster coming back is, is going to be pretty similar. I mean, they did add Craig Smith in the forward group, but there's not a ton of change here. Obviously, they're going to have some subtractions, like their former captain no longer with the club, but they could turn to the trade market, and I think one player that they were... Uh, you know, shopping earlier in the offseason that wouldn't be surprised if they made a move would be a forward like Anders Bjork, who really has yet to find that consistency at the NHL level. Uh, doesn't mean he's going to be moved, but if they do find a defenseman that they would really like to trade for to add that extra depth and to kind of give things a boost back there, I think he would be one of the prime targets they would try to include in a trade to make that happen. They've also been linked to willing, willing to move back in Ireland as well if they can upgrade to get, uh, you know, somebody who's a little bit more experienced uh, maybe a few years ahead in development, and so who can play a more regular shift and has just like I said a little bit more, you know, regularity to their NHL games so far in their young career. Now it doesn't mean they'd be wanting to add an older veteran like a like, like what they had in Chara, but at the same time they can get you know somebody with a couple of years experience. They would make that move as well. So those would be the prime players that could still get moved by Don Sweeney and the Bruins if they decide to go to the trade route, but they could go the easier road here for right now and bring in an extra UFA defenseman for added depth, give the youngsters more of an opportunity and kind of see how things play out. And they very well could be uh, players to add uh, to the roster later on into the season, depending on how things go. It's going to be a different-looking Bruins team with their captain. Obviously, uh, Pasternak's going to miss the start of the year as well. It's going to be a very different time in Boston. Obviously, I'd fully suspect the next captain will be Patrice Bergeron. I don't think there's... Really much to think about in that regard. Uh, obviously, they'll have to add an extra A to somebody else as well, where he already has an A on his jersey. So uh, I would think Krejci probably keeps his A. We'd probably give the other one either to Marchand or uh, you know, maybe a defense, but I'm not sure what they'll do. But either way, I think it's fair to say Bergeron will wear the C for the Bruins moving forward, which is certainly a well-deserved accomplishment for him. He's basically been like a second captain to them for a long time. Anyway, now, when it comes to the Winnipeg Jets, I want to talk about them in the trade rumor mill. Uh, we talked about them a bit yesterday and Jack Roslevic's name being out there. And then we did get confirmation today from Pierre Lebrun of TSN and The Athletic conferring that he's talked to his agent, Claude Lemieux, and that Jack Roslevic has indeed asked for a trade. So not only is it something that he would prefer, but he has officially requested it. And at this point, it's not really clear the Jets' intention. Listening to comments from GM Kevin Sheveldayoff, uh, I don't think he's in, really in a big rush here. Uh, comments from him indicated that they're still trying to negotiate a contract, and I still think they're trying to do that. But at the same time, Roslevic wants out, and he's made that public now, and I think they've done that to put a little pressure on Winnipeg to make a move. I don't think Roslevic has a whole ton of leverage here, to be completely honest. I mean, he's a player who's really not overly established as a bigger name. Uh, you know, he's been inconsistent, and yes, he's been kind of held down in the lineup, played a smaller role than he would have liked. But, you know, it is what it is. I just don't think that, you know, teams are going to be banging down the door to make a trade. I think there will be interest for sure. But from the Sheffield Dayoff standpoint, he's not going to just give them away. He's going to wait to find the right move that works for the Winnipeg organization. And if that comes later on, then, the, you know, Roslovic could be missing part of the year. And it wouldn't be completely surprising if he ends up in a holdout situation. And maybe things get interesting as we get closer to that deadline. Uh, for when RFAs need to sign to be able to play this year because they can only miss so much time. Normally, that cutoff is December. Obviously, it's different this year because the season's starting at a different time. But still, like you know, there's always deadlines for that thing to, for that type of thing to be made. So but right now, I think the, the leverage is in Winnipeg's hands. If they decide to let them sit, so be it. They'll wait, find the right trade, and go from there. I would think some teams, though, like the Blue Jackets, would be a prime team who would be coming to be interested, as I mentioned last night as well. I think the Jackets are a team looking that we know are looking to add offensive players. He would be able to get a bigger role with them. And uh, they, we know they've had trade discussions before. So not sure he's the player that the Jackets want exactly, but I can see there being some interest on that regard. There's a few other teams as well, probably teams that uh, you know are 
mostly rebuilding would be the teams I would suspect would be the most interested for the most part here. But Roslovic apparently wants it to Winnipeg, and we'll see if the, how quickly the Jets and Shovel Day Off are to accommodate. Now, lastly here, I want to touch on the Los Angeles Kings. We have, we have comments from the Kings organization indicating that they're willing to use their cap space if they can get a favorable deal to take a not-so-favorable contract off another team's hands. Basically, they're alluding to the fact that if a team wants to make a deal with them and give them an incentive to take a bad contract on, of course, on a short-term basis, they would be willing to do that. So that is, you know, not a huge shock. I mean, the Kings right now, as we know, have a deep prospect pool. They've uh, they made some moves to add this offseason, and they're a team that's going to be on the rise here in the next few years as a lot of these prospects uh, become more regular players and see what they're made of at the NHL level. They have over $12 million in space. They've made it known before. They'd be willing to add, and they're willing to add not only to make the team better, but to make the team better for the future as well. So uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, you're looking at teams that are you know up against the cap that need to make a move. You're looking at teams like the Vegas Golden Knights, for example. Maybe they could get themselves a player like Jonathan Marsh or so out of Vegas. I mean, that would be a nice add for the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, obviously, a guy like Marsh or so would make them better now and into the future. would fit well with what they're looking to do. Uh, you look to a team like the Vancouver Canucks who need to make some moves. Now, would they take it on a guy like a Brandon Sutter or a Louis Erickson for them to give them some cap relief? That's a possibility, but what are they going to want in return as that extra sweetener piece to make that happen? That's difficult to say. I mean, but the Canucks are certainly a team that comes to mind uh, for a team that would need to make a move who could be calling Los Angeles for some assistance in that regard, but you know that they're not going to do them too many favors without paying a fairly steep price, I would think. There's other teams out there as well, but certainly some other teams that have certainly have already got things figured out through the long-term injury reserve method, like the Tampa Bay Lightning, for example. We've seen the Capitals, of course, with their uh, chair assigning today. Obviously, they have some LTIR movement as well within their organization to cover things, but to go over the cap too. Um, so we'll see. A lot of teams are going to be using the LTIR method more so than before. And uh, obviously, some teams though, are not going to have that luxury, so they might be looking to add players who fit that mold. So uh, contracts like a Marion Hossa or a Henrik Zetterberg, I still think could be traded, but they're more likely to be traded right as the season is getting ready to open so these teams can put them on LTIR and get their opening roster set to maximize their cap space uh, due to how everything works with using the LTIR pool. So would not be surprising if the Kings take a bad contract. Would not be surprising to see some of those LTIR type contracts moved around here to help some of these teams in desperate need as well. But for sure, the Kings are going to try to take advantage of their space and put it to their advantage, and it only makes sense for them to do so. So let me know your thoughts on something discussed down below in the comments, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.